Thank you. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, good. Good. Uh, I'm Ian Sefferman. I'm the SVP of customer experience here at Tune. My charter is to do whatever it takes to make our customers happy. And I'm here with Sissy Shao, global head of mobile app ads at Google. Welcome. Thank you. Um, can I get a quick introduction from you, what your role is at Google, what you, what you spend your time on? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I lead product for mobile app advertising at Google. Uh, really, that's uh, two primary businesses. One is uh, pertinent to everyone here, is uh, our user acquisition and re-engagement uh, business. And the other business, which I think might be relevant uh, to some of you here, is our AdMob app network, so helping uh, app developers monetize through ads. Cool. And you come by mobile pretty naturally, right? You're, a, you're actually a, a hardcore gamer. Uh, yeah, since I was, you know, six. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what's your, what's your game of choice today? Uh, so there's this MOBA on tablet. It's called Vainglory. It's made by Super hey. Evil Megacorp. Oh, there, I heard one woo. Uh, so yes, um, uh, I main Scarf, for those of you who know the game. And, uh, but I play, you know, I'm an equal opportunity uh, game player. I'll play any casual game all the way up to you know, any hardcore game. Most importantly for this crowd, are you a whale? Yes, I'm a whale, <laughs> but only for the games that I like. So I think it's really interesting that I like certain games I won't spend, but the games like Bangalore that I uh, do love and enjoy, I do spend um, quite a bit of money to support to the developers and the community. Awesome. All yeah. right. So we're going to be talking a little bit about app marketing today and app marketing in the future. What is the state? And I think you obviously have just a, a sort of incredible seat at the table with your role at Google. Um, You've been in mobile for a while now. Yeah. What do you think has really changed? What's the biggest change that you've seen over the last few years in mobile? Yeah, I mean, uh, some of you might remember that uh, you know, I started in mobile about six years ago. And uh, at the time, I think Google had bought AdMob about a year and a half before mm -hmm. that. And uh, user acquisition was sort of you know, banners at the bottom that linked to the store, um, or it was incentivized downloads, or it was some kind of chart rank you know, shooting. And that was sort of the extent of the strategies um, back then. And I think it's really come a long way in many dimensions. Uh, first of all, and most importantly, is that apps have matured. Uh, I think people have really learned what makes great apps and what really delivers value for users in apps, whether it's, you know, incredibly great gaming that is like above and beyond what people used to make to um, traditional businesses using apps like um, airlines or, or banks really creating apps that uh, deliver true value uh, and are differentiated from their websites, you know, true value for users. And I think with that value comes, um, uh, you know, opportunity to create great marketing and to drive, you know, great, uh, you know, users to those apps to derive that value. Um, on the marketing side, you know, you know, most of you are not just buying banners at the bottom pointing to stores or buying incentivized downloads, right? Um, there's so many channels, there's so many techniques to acquire and find users. Users themselves are on multiple devices, you know, going through time and, and of the day through many different digital touch points. So it's, and it's, you know, much more competitive, right? You know, I think back then it was like maybe tens of thousands of apps or if not that, and now it's millions. And so, um, you know, it's just much harder, but also, you know, I think there's much more value to be gained from this ecosystem. Yeah, and so there's, there is lots of channels for sure. Yeah. Um, you guys have an important channel, and you've also done a bunch of updates and, and had some nice releases mm -hmm. this year, over the, over, throughout the entire year, including at Google I.O. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about some of the new products that you guys are offering? Yeah, of course. Um, so, uh, you know, Universal App Campaigns has been our flagship product in um, user acquisition for quite some time now. And, uh, you know, for those of you who don't know what it is, um, it's a single campaign that drives uh, acquisition across all of the billion user properties that Google has. So specifically, uh, Google Search, Google Play, YouTube, um, our AdMob network, our GDN network, and, and including Gmail. And we're always looking for um, new inventory as well. Um, so some of the recent things that I launched at I.O. are uh, the addition of uh, those uh, app install ads on the home page of Google Play. And that's coming uh, very soon. We're releasing that very soon. We're also um, 
improving the way that you can bid for uh, more value within the app. So we have a TCPI a version of UAC, but we are coming out with a TCPA version, which helps you bid more effectively for uh, actions in the app, and also um, uh, a T-ROAS version, which helps you deliver uh, a specific target ROAS that you're interested in. Um, you know, I'm really excited that Google has been doing um, so much work in this space. Like, I've seen it grow up in the past you know, six years. Uh, we announced that we um, have delivered 5 billion installs through our ads to date, and that's 2.5x uh, what we did last year. And so we're just seeing tremendous growth, um, both in our adoption of our products, but also in the ecosystem. Wow, that's great. And I think one of the interesting things is that UAC is going to come to all everything now, right? Like it will be the the sole uh, way to buy. Is that right? Yeah, you know, we uh, have announced that our all of our future uh, improvements will be on UAC. So the new inventory, the new formats, the new uh, targeting capabilities will be UAC specific. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the like the great things about that is that it's it shows a continued investment by Google into machine learning. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, like, how do you view machine learning as both impacting the products that you're creating at Google mm -hmm. as well as just marketing in general? Yeah, um, you know, I think uh, what my boss's boss says is like machine learning, we were using it before it was cool. So actually, unbeknownst to many people, like many pieces of ads at Google, search, core search ads, um, quality systems have been using machine learning for a long time. And in fact, um, just speaking generally about machine learning, you know, some of you might have heard of TensorFlow. That's really you know, our cloud offering, allowing any developer out there to use you know, the best of Google's machine learning. And it grew up because Google was using this technology and building it for ourselves. And now we've made it available to the world to you know, deliver you know, whatever value you want to use it with. So the most frivolous you know, example I can think of is uh, some of you guys might have heard of an app called like, Hot Dog Not Hot Dog. <laughs> Uh, which helps you take a picture on your phone and like it guesses if it's a hot dog or not. Um, <laughs> not sure it's totally useful, but um, actually there's a great Medium post on uh, how the machine learning was put on the phone. So the phone itself is running the neural networks and machine learning and able to now recognize whether there's a hot dog. And there's interesting things like, is a chopped up sausage a hot dog or not? Anyways. Um, <laughs> The point is, though, uh, that you know, machine learning is now you know, the hotness. All the new startups are you know, calling it AI or machine learning. And in reality, uh, we've been using it for a long time in ads, unbeknownst to many marketers. Um, we are taking it one step further right, with you know, universal app campaigns approach and thinking about applying that approach to not just app install, but to other parts of advertising. And really like, you know, alluding to that complexity that now marketers face every day, there's just mountains of data. There's mountains of data coming from your app, mountains of data coming from your website, mountains of data coming from multiple devices of which you can't stitch the identity together. And you're trying to figure out like, how do we actually deliver value when there's so much signal? And that's what machine learning is good at. Machine learning is good at like getting a bunch of data and predicting and delivering the results you want. So I don't think it's a uh, either or. I think that you know machine learning is a technique, right, to help digital marketers offload some of that manual burden and to help elevate their work towards um, more strategic things that they should be doing, like how do I add value to my marketing? How do I work on my creative to really attract the best users? Um, so it's really a tool, and it's something that uh, we're increasingly um, investing in across Google, across many products, um, in ads, as well as in our consumer properties like um, Google Photos, Assistant, um, our, our new consumer uh, offerings. So you, you talked a little bit about that, the sort of changing role of a marketer and, and focusing on the creative. Yeah. Maybe we can, we can dive in a little bit further on that. Yeah. What do you really think that, like, in a, in a world where machine learning can, can help to automate and optimize, what does the role of the marketer become? Yeah, I think that's a great question, and I think um, you know we're at like a you know a, a, a bigger change, step change in digital marketing right now because of we're embracing this technology more so. So I think that the role of how you add value is going to change in a few dimensions. I would just leave you with some thoughts on that. One is. Um, it's not like there's a pile of data and you just throw it at a machine learning algorithm and then it works, right? In reality, like you can think of it as a technology that works for you and you need to learn 
how to use it effectively. And so that is, you know, everything from collection of great data from uh, companies like Tune and our AAP partners, collecting great data, making sure that you're modeling your KPIs and your LTV correctly. So, what, you know, it's really now lasering in on you have to really understand what is value and be able to model that in a, an almost a mathematical way. And so, you know, your data scientists, your statisticians, they're going to be an integral part of making sure that that data is modeled well and that data is fed back into the advertising systems and the machine learning algorithms so they do learn the right thing and the right outcome for you. Um, going back to the hot dog example for a second, um, you know, there, is a, there are many situations in machine learning where, where if things fail. For example, they were talking about overfitting. And what overfitting is, is if you don't train the machine learning algorithm right, it basically only recognizes the hot dogs that you've shown it. So if you show it like 10 hot dog pictures, it will only recognize those as hot dogs and it will kind of not be able to learn more generalities. Like this is the shape of a hot dog, this is the color of a hot dog, this is like the bun. So the point is that like, you can do it poorly. Like you can collect the data, but not give it the right. Um, you can you can train it poorly, right? So I think that there is a piece of how to learn how machine learning works, right? Um, and then making sure that you are getting those uh, data models correct, and that you can articulate what those KPIs are to the machine learning algorithm, as well as you know to you, the rest of your um, you know business or your uh, your your boss or whoever you're trying to. Uh, speak to. So I think the data side is really, really important to understand and get very crisp on, and that's how it will work the most effectively. The second piece is creative. Like, the machine does not know what pictures or text or videos or screenshots to show uh, your customers. Only you do, right? Um, I will say that, like, on mobile alone, I run AdMob Network as well. You know, across the channels that I talked about, we literally have, you know, tons of different shapes and sizes of ads. We have banners, we have interstitials, we have video, we have native, which could be any size. We have play, you know, front page, which is a different size. And so the direction we're going with creative is more what we call asset-based creative, which is saying, great, like, you as a marketer will still understand the best way to attract attention and track the right users to your product, and that is through you know, text, images, creative expression, but you feed that into our system and we will sort of essentially mix and match um, the pieces to make the best combination um, to show in that unit. So if it's a rectangle that's this high because it's in a feed, you know, it will we will combine automatically, you know, the images, the snippets of text and so forth to optimize that click-through rate and conversion rate. And so even there, I would say we are using machine learning, but it's only taking the bits of information that you've given it, which is what, what message do I want to send to my customers? And it's using that to optimize to your KPI. So I think it, the, it you know, eventually I think marketers will very quickly learn how to be symbiotically using this technology for their benefit. So, uh, okay, so we're, we've been talking a little bit about it, the, the future of app marketing yeah. clearly includes machine learning, right? Yeah. I, I think another way that app marketing seems to be changing over the future, next few years, is things like the convergence of web and app and things like instant apps. Yeah. Um, Google has done some really cool stuff without being able to download apps or parts of apps without actually going to the Play Store. Mm -hmm. how, how does this continue to evolve and what does, it, what does it mean for an app marketer? Yeah, you know, Instant Apps is a really cool technology that the Android and Play teams worked on together. Um, you know, I think the insight I have is that, um, you know, we shouldn't focus necessarily about which technology we should use or which, you know, what the differences are. We should really think about what their intention is for and then use that technology as appropriate to solve your users' problems. So I'll give you an example. People often frame the question, well, you have PWA, you have AMP, you have instant apps, you have binary apps. Like, what are you telling us Google to do? And I would turn the question around and say, like, what, do you, what are you trying to solve? And each of these technologies is differently uh, oriented for different of those situations. So for example, um, maybe a user is on a low bandwidth situation, and in that moment, an app page is the best to serve them. Maybe they don't want to use your service you know, uh, 
for long periods of time or continually, and maybe an instant app is the best for that situation. And you might be the same business, and you could use these technologies in a mix and match way to sort of deliver different offerings, right? And I think that with web and app, we're already seeing some of that like understanding of, hey, the website and the app are different. I need to make an app that does different things than my app website. And I think these new surfaces are just more renditions of that. So really figuring that out is the first step. And then the second step, which is advertising, you know, our job is to just to point users where there's the most predicted value. So if the user is predicted to convert better or have a, a higher LTV if they point to the app than the website, like we're endeavoring to build systems that are intelligent about that. So you don't have to necessarily hand code a bunch of rules in. Ideally, we're just figuring out like where to take that user in that moment. That's awesome. Well, I'm certainly excited about the future of app marketing. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and, and yeah, sharing your wisdom. You. Uh, awesome to have you here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks, Ian.